Hi there. Here's a teaser of your tailored lesson plan. We will focus on pronunciations that are the most common challenges for Portuguese speakers from both Europe and Latin America. As a preview, we've selected our top seven challenge sounds. Let's listen to them right now. First, let's watch a clip of football player Cristiano Ronaldo in an interview in 2018. As you listen to him, I want you to pay attention to just three words, truth, daddy, and time. When Cristiano is going to grow up, I'm always, always going to say the truth to him because he deserves it. He's going to understand his daddy. He's going to understand. I'm sure 100%. 100%. He's going to understand me. I'm going to say the time when I feel that is the right time. I don't know. All right. Let's dig into that. Challenge sound number one is the TH spelling. In the word truth, you can hear Cristiano use a T sound at the end of the word. A majority of English speakers will pronounce this as TH, so that it sounds like truth. This sound will be a big point to focus on and will make your pronunciation that much clearer to an English speaking audience. Challenge sound number two is the A ah sound. This sound is not present in Portuguese and as a result can be substituted for many other sounds. Cristiano pronounces it as E eh in the word daddy. It's the same sound he uses in understand. In your lessons, you'll learn exactly how to create an A ah sound and when to apply it so that that word can be pronounced as daddy. Challenge sound number three is the pronunciation of diphthongs. For the word time, Cristiano uses a diphthong, which means a slide between two vowel sounds. His sound slides from a to i, so i, time. Most American English speakers use the slide from a to i, i, time. Don't hear a difference? That's okay. This is a phenomenon called phonemic awareness. If your brain has never needed to differentiate between these sounds, then as a result, it doesn't prioritize their distinction. Our lessons will train your body to first feel the difference between the sounds so that then your ear gains the ability to hear the difference. Now, let's listen to a speaker from Latin America. This is Brazilian model activist and businesswoman Giselle Bunchin. As you listen, pay attention to just these three words, small, little, and up. Let's watch. And he kind of started this kind of fear of being um, in, in small spaces. So he started with a little plane ride, but then he became like tunnels, subways, elevators. I mean, I lived in the ninth floor in an apartment. I would go up nine floors of stairs. Let's dig into that clip. Challenge sound number four is the ul sound. You can hear in Giselle's pronunciation of small that for the final sound, her lip corners come forward to make ul, small. The majority of American English speakers use something similar to that, but without the rounding of the lip corners. And that sounds like this, ul, small, small, versus small. Still don't hear a difference? That's okay. There is an entire lesson dedicated to breaking down the mechanics of this sound and helping you build phonemic awareness. Challenge sound number five is the distinction between e and e. English spelling has no helpful rules for when to apply each of these sounds, and as a result, it is easy to confuse the two. You can hear it in Giselle's pronunciation of little as Little. Not to worry. There's a lesson here that breaks down this distinction and gives you plenty of chances to explore the difference between the two pronunciations. Challenge sound number six is what to do when you come across a U spelling. This spelling is also unreliable when it comes to English pronunciation. This is an especially tricky sound, and so you can achieve it by building up your phonemic awareness and your muscle memory. In the word up, Giselle pronounces the U spelling as a, ah, up. 
the same vowel she uses for the U spelling in tunnels. And these words are pronounced by American English speakers with an uh, up, and tunnels. This vowel is common in American pronunciation and can make a huge impact on your audience. You'll learn more about it in your strut vowel lesson. Finally, challenge sound number seven is all about the distinction between voiced and unvoiced consonants. In English pronunciation, a word that ends in an S spelling is often pronounced with Z. This is a small detail, but you can hear it in both Giselle and Cristiano's speech. All of their S endings sound like this. So you can hear it in Cristiano's pronunciation of always, always, and Giselle's pronunciation of tunnels, subways, and elevators. In this course, you'll learn the rules that govern the pronunciation change to z, and it'll take your English pronunciation to the next level. With pronunciations like always, tunnels, subways, and elevators. There is a lot of ground to cover, and it may feel daunting at times. I'm here to assure you though, progress is possible with practice and the right instruction. Just listen to this clip of Brazilian singer Anita in 2021. She excels at many of our challenge sounds, but I'm going to point out just three. Listen closely to these words. Well, happy, and like. It's doing really well. I'm very happy. I'm very excited. I think it's a lot to do yet. So I'm in this moment that I'm like very... Let's unpack that. She nails the final sound in well, with no lip corner rounding, and then makes a successful ah sound in happy. Finally, she slides from an ah to an i eh in like, like. She's doing a great job. And one thing is certain, she did not learn those sounds overnight. Learning a new accent is a long process and demands patience and determined practice. Today, you've taken the most important step in the process, the first one. So let's get started. 